Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa, and I'm actually at the University of Ottawa, having um, just made it in um, just before 7 p.m. because I've been wandering around Ottawa all day uh, doing um, video filming. Um, so, what I'm going to talk about this video is the Earth system energy imbalance um, and the role, the important role of the uh, Southern Oceans in the overall climate system. Um, so, it, I've been talking a lot about the EMEAN, um, which is studied in, intensely um, by many people and, uh, you know, a large part of the Hansen et al. landmark paper that was just released. So, the orbital changes of the Earth, namely in the shape of the Earth's orbit um, around the Sun, the um, tilt of the Earth's axes um, relative to the orbital plane around the Sun, and the um, di direction that the axes of rotation of the Earth points, these, these factors, these geometry factors all change at time scales of 100,000 years, 40,000 years, and 20,000 years. These are known as the Milankovic cycles. And what they do is they cause a uh, forcing of on the order of 0 0.1 watts per square meter um, on the surface of the Earth. And it's persistent, and it's enough to start triggering changes in the uh, size of the ice sheets and greenhouse gases. And it's the reason for the um, difference between glacials and interglacials. Um, so the uh, main feedbacks that, that kick in are the, um, the glacial interglacial albedo changes because the nature of the ice sheet changes and also the uh, CO2 that is stored in the ocean changes so that the CO2 in the atmosphere will then vary um, from glacial to interglacial cycles. And both of those two particular feedback forcings, the ice sheet albedo and the CO2 changes um, between glacial interglacial number um, time periods, those are about three watts per square meter. Um, and those, that's enough to uh, basically have uh, give the climate sensitivity that we have, which is about 0 0.5 to one degree Celsius. Uh, per watt per per watt per meter squared. Um, so if there's a change of one watt per meter squared, then you know an increase in the imbalance. Um, if it's a net gain of energy, then we'll warm that 0.5 to one degree. So the two feedbacks combined um, is about six watt per square meter. Multiply that by the temperature range, and we have basically a three to six degree temperature range. Um, which is what we would expect um, for, you know, that's where that three to six degree uh, temperature sensitivity number comes from, basically. Um, so um, you get these changes occurring. Um, now, you know, how, what is the interplay of the Southern Ocean? Why is the Southern Ocean so important? Um, today, we're in an interglacial, the Holocene, the average age of deep water in the ocean, that's the average, so the age is um, the time since that water left the ocean surface. Um, so that, uh, and then it stays submerged and then will resurface. But the average age of the, of the deep water now is about a thousand years um, in our interglacial state. Um, during the glacial states, um, there is more stratification of the water at the surface, there's less mixing, there's less CO2 captured, so, um, the, so there, there's less, so the CO2 that is captured takes longer to come out, so that the time period is about, um, the age is about 2,000 years, uh, or greater than 2,000 years. Now the southern ocean um, dominates the exchange between the deep ocean and the atmosphere, uh, because roughly 80% of the deep water uh, resurfaces in the Southern Ocean. And the reason why this occurs is because there's no land, um, there, there's, there, there, the uh, ocean currents um, circumvent the entire globe. There's no land blocking it. So you get these very, very strong um, ocean currents um, which move from west to east um, around, the, around Antarctica. 
And because the Coriolis force deflects things to the left in the southern hemisphere, these west to easterly ocean currents, um, because of Ekman flow, they pull water away from Antarctica. So they pull surface water away from Antarctica. Um, and that water is replaced by um, upwelling. Um, uh, that, that water is, is, is replaced. It causes deep ventilation of, of, of the deep water. Um, so um, this, because in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, we talk about the North Atlantic, the North Atlantic deep water formation, etc. cetera. Um, the, you know, that, that's in the Atlantic, but in the Pacific, we don't have that uh, situation. So um, the amount of water um, exchange between the surface and the deep is much less in the Northern Hemisphere. It's much greater in the Southern Ocean. So the Southern Oceans are considered the, um, the, 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 the key factor. Uh, in terms of uh, exchange of CO2 between the atmosphere and the ocean. So when there's uh, glacial periods and there's poor ocean um, ventilation, um, then carbon um, can be sequestered in the ocean uh, more via the biological pump. So uh, phytoplankton uh, dying, uh, being eaten, feces dropping from, from life, um, and that organic matter rains down onto the uh, ocean floor um, and is, is buried in the sediments. There's also the solubility pump, uh, the colder water from the uh, glacial periods um, dissolves more CO2, it can hold more uh, CO2. So there's less in the atmosphere at those, at those time periods. Um, so um, we also know that um, CO2 is the um, principal determinant of the Earth's climate state. So it's the control knob that sets the global mean temperature. Um, and in order to have a Holocene-like interglacial, which we've been used to since, uh, you know, which has allowed civilization to develop, the CO2 dial or knob has to be turned down to about that 250, you know, 260, that sort of level, even even 300 parts per million, um, 350 would, would keep us in a, in a, in a safer zone. Um, with the higher level, um, so so you know one of the why is why is CO2 such a control knob? Um, it changes slowly as a climate feedback in the natural system, but it also is independent of the the um, the climate. Um, if you like, not the climate system, but the, the atmosphere, the, clim the, the climate in the atmosphere. Um, because we can have uh, natural CO2 change, for example, you know, an increase to 1,000 ppm occurred about 50 million years ago, the paleo eocene thermal maximum time, and that was mostly a result of uh, plate tectonics, volcanic emissions um, associated with movement of the Indian plate uh, across the ocean colliding with Asia. Uh, but humans, with the fossil, you know, we with burning fossil fuels, um, where we've cranked that control knob for CO2 extremely high. We moved it uh, much higher, um, so now um, the atmosphere much more closely resembles um, a different uh, climate state in terms of the oceans and atmosphere and sea ice. So the sea ice is rapidly melting as we head to this much warmer state. Also, um, the ultimate thing, the ultimate removal of CO2 from the system is via weathering, and full removal by weathering can take, uh, you know, 100,000 years, uh, that sort of time scale. So, the Southern Ocean and this, the SMOC, the Southern Meridional Overturning Circulation, uh, rules supreme um, as, as a control knob on CO2, and that's contrary to the idea that's commonly viewed um, being that the AMOC is the prime driver. Um, the AMOC uh, does affect uh, things, but the main effect of the AMOC is to allow more heat. When it shuts down, when it's in the off state, is a lot more heat transfers to the Southern Ocean. So the Southern Ocean feedbacks uh, kick in. Um, the difference between the AMOC being on and off is a difference of about one petawatt of heat which would be about four watts per square, per square centimeter averaged over an entire hemisphere. So we get this um, bipolar seesaw occurring. So the idea um, 
with the AMOC shutoff, as we've talked about, is that the, um, the AMOC shuts off, more heat goes to the southern oceans, there's more melting of ice caps there, which causes uh, stratification of the waters there and growing uh, sea ice and reduction of the uh, SMOC. And the reduction of the SMOC leads to the water, you know, a few kilometers down being much, much warmer. And then that uh, causes increased uh, melting rates of the, of the ice in Antarctica that's grounded on bedrock. So you can look at the whole system um, changes. Um, so, so those are the key factors. Um, so, the, 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 uh, and this is shown in both the data and in the model, the models, and uh, also, you know, in present day, you know, what's happening in present day, I'll discuss in the next video. But the main conclusions are subsurface ocean warming is a very effective mechanism for destabilizing ice shelves, and thus the ice sheets that are buttressed by the ice shelves. And second, large, sea, large rapid sea level rise can occur as a result of, of melting the ice shelves. Um, and I'm not talking about uh, glacial time scales, you know, very long time scales. I'm talking about, you know, with a very large forcing today, we can get very large nonlinear uh, sea level rise. Um, and uh, there does seem to be evidence in the paleo records that the late Eemian sea level rise of five to five to nine meters above present day was due to um, an AMOC uh, slowdown, which the C26 slowdown, which caused an increase in Southern Ocean heat, uh, which caused uh, ice shelf melt, uh, ice shelf collapse, cascading um, uh, calving of uh, ice, ice shelves and increased ice sheet or ice cap melt and rapid uh, sea level rise at uh, nonlinear rates. And uh, also this caused um, large uh, cool areas of water, which then caused large temperature gradients with the warmer water, um, causing large pressure differences and storms um, where winds were 10 or 20 percent uh, stronger, and therefore the energy power dissipation of the winds was 1.5 to 2 tons higher, causing massive, um, massive, persistent, long wavelength uh, waves, um, which uh, the, the geological evidence on Bahamas seems to show uh, reached uh, 30 meters in, in wave height. Um, so, um, so this is uh, basically where where we're where we're uh, heading. Um, and quite quickly, actually, um, and this is why the uh, this this James Hansen paper is so clearly um, is clearly a landmark uh, a landmark paper. Um, and uh, you know, as we in six months we have the Paris um, COP 21 climate conference, and we failed to get action on reducing emissions for the last 20 COPs. Uh, for that for 20 for 20 years so we are reaching the stage where you know it's it's uh, it's uh, we, we don't have a choice we have to uh, slash uh, emissions um, to start so so uh, thank you